live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Barcelona, Spain, the Cube's coverage of Cisco Live Europe 2019. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, and Dave Vellante, all here this week, getting all the action. Our next guest is Ron Sturbins, who's the marketing manager of Stealth Watch Cloud, formerly as part of the acquisition original team of uh, Observable Networks. Correct. Um, small startup that was bought by Cisco in 2017. Now you're in the big company, key part of the portfolio on security and cloud. Welcome to theCUBE again, good to Thank see you. you. Thank you, John. Um, so what's going on in Europe? What are the big trends? Obviously here in Barcelona, it's EMIR, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Russia. Yep. Um, a lot of compliance, a lot of regulated industries across the board. Yep. A lot of security concerns, a lot of privacy concerns. Um, That's right. Security's at the center of the value version of Cisco's network approach. Yep. What's well, last, you know, as of last year, we, we were down in the front of this, of the event, um, and I would say the traffic was pretty good. Now we're in the back, um, we're seeing a lot more interest, we're seeing actual customers come up, subscribers to our product and service, hey, I've been with you now for a year, what's new? Um, so it's nice to see that, that we didn't have right after the acquisition, which was where we were last year. So in Europe, what are some of the trends, uh, and the, what's resonating with Kubernetes. customers? Kubernetes. You know, you guys were out at, at KubeCon. Uh, for us, that was a great show. A lot of interest in Kubernetes. Um, and we're seeing the same thing here in the, in the base, as well as the Cisco solution for it. Yeah. And the DevNet zone, which we're in, has all these classrooms. I got to say, right next to us is classroom one. The Kubernetes session yesterday mm -hmm. was overflowing into our set. Yeah. yeah. Ron, why don't we expand a little bit. What's exciting people about Kubernetes? Do you have any guidance as to, you know, who they're using, because I, I think back a year ago, a lot of the customers I talked to, they were like building their own. And yeah. you know, it's like I Kubernetes the hard way as opposed to today, uh, you know, obviously Cisco's got solution, you've got deep partnership with AWS, mm -hmm. uh, with Google and the like, so yeah. We're seeing it all across the board. A lot of folks using Amazon to do it. Um, we would always see customers, Google was a natural for it. Um, we are actually having customers come up to say, we're using the Cisco platform for it. So, you know, for us, it's the whole breadth. What's also nice about it is we really simplify the deployment for Kubernetes, so it doesn't matter whether any of those environments are going to be used from a security perspective. Real easy to inject it into the Kubernetes environments, expand and contract, and feed the security solution that we offer. So again, what's also really nice is the multi-cloud, right? So whether it's Kubernetes, a little bit of AWS on the web servers, a little bit of the on-prem, any of the other Cisco kind of compute platforms, all of that data is coming in. Yeah, it's a, I wonder, if it just when you look at security, uh, you, you know, it felt like a few years ago we got over the hump of the public cloud can be secure. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges I have is if I'm in a multi-cloud environment, security is different in every one of those, so I've got different right. skill sets, I have to match this. How, yeah, how, that, how are you helping customers? How are they sorting through that? Yeah, and then the other part of it is they're used to what they would see on-prem in a physical network. So by doing what we do into the cloud allows a customer to have that traditional security perspective across all those environments of things that they're used to. So if you look at it from the automation and simplicity, that's a great value prop. The other one that's a really interesting value prop is I don't want to have to normalize for every data feed and element that comes out of those clouds. So by for us doing it across all of our portfolio, when a feed changes with AWS, we're normalizing and bringing it in as a security perspective for the customer. So you basically outsource a lot of the easy or hard lift of modifying those particular feeds into, the, in, into our solution or service. Talk about the, um, the cloud, um, uh, uh, cloud center service that you guys have a suite now. You have a variety of mission portfolio. Certainly security's in there, that's Watch Cloud. You mentioned Kubernetes, you can't look at without containers being part yeah. of that. You've the, got the Cisco container service, uh, Google and AWS. Yeah. How do you guys fit into that? What's the key Stealth Watch Cloud value proposition? Yeah, so there is a, a reference architecture that um, Cisco has put out where we look at ACI anywhere, we look at the container platform, security on the top of it. Um, we're able to integrate in other solutions. We're seeing a lot more interest in the SD-WAN part of the house, being able to, again, simplify the security for all of those infrastructures back. Um, so that's a really nice reference architecture to go into an environment and try to leverage the whole portfolio for simplicity, broader breadth and depth. What are some of the conversations you're having with customers around multi-cloud? Do they come in and say, okay, give me some of that Stealth Watch Cloud, or how do I architect it in? How does it fit in? 
How yeah. do, what, is, what are some of those customer conversations? What do they look like? Well, the first one is simplicity. How, how difficult is this to do? How broad can I put it in the solution? And will it really do what you're, for, what you're forecasting or saying it will, right? With this thing called endpoint modeling or entity modeling. Um, what we also encourage is a free trial. So we allow customers to use the full service across all of those platforms, go as broad as, as, as they want during that trial period, and we prove out the value prop. In other words, you're able to see these devices in near real time, um, devices that you're normal and familiar with, the ability, again, to expand and contract in Kubernetes, and see those, whether you put an Apache server on a node and that's the way it performs, and you expand out and get six of those, they will perform exactly the same way, and the expectation is that they will. But what we do in the demos in the booth is show the customer how easy it is to do that, and then encourage them to do it with their own environment in a trial. And that's where we, get, we solidify the customer into a sale yeah. to an ongoing subscriber. So Ron, it's been interesting to watch. As, you know, we, we've got a lot of background and history uh, with, with Cisco. Your solution, you're in the AWS marketplace, like Bayou software, yeah. in the, the Google marketplace, it's not you know, boxes and uh, you know, that model. Talk about how, how it's been coming into Cisco now and kind of the, the go-to-market, how, how that, uh, you know, we're watching a lot of Cisco change to go more towards where you were pre-acquisition even. Mm -hmm. So how's that dynamic changing? Uh, well, yes, yeah, so see, we went from a team of 14, I think we're up to 21, 22 now. And then we've got the other partnership, our brothers and sisters of 70,000 people. <laughs> um, so it is one, influencing that product plus all the partners and then getting them to encourage them to sell the ability to sell in Cisco GPL, the also the ability to transact, and Cisco's really supportive of wherever the customer wants to be, whether that's AWS, Azure, AWS Marketplace, very easy to do a transaction there, and at the same time, you know, the, the, we don't lose any of the internal compensation for Cisco employees or Cisco sailors, um, so that's really nice, and, and it's simple for a customer. As you move from being a startup, which is nimble, you guys were small, you're in the front lines, you come into Cisco, what was your impression about how Cisco's portfolio was coming together, and where is it now, almost one year later, coming up on your one year Yeah, I think you can see that in the floor space here when you look at cloud. So the first year that we were here, we were included in that whole piece, um, probably lighter traffic. This year, we're seeing a lot more people with the interest in cloud. I think next year you will see more Cisco sellers, partners, buyers in that space asking about what's coming next. I mean, we're getting MSPs this year to say, hey, look, we're trying to do a Kubernetes practice. Is there a way that we can attach a security perspective to that in a multi-tenancy, servicing our customers, being able to do the remediation? And we are, and I don't think that's a conversation we had last year. Ron, take a minute to explain simply the story for multi-cloud for Cisco from a security perspective. What's your, how would you describe to someone the multi-cloud story for, from Cisco? What is it? Well, take a minute to explain that. Yeah, and the multi-cloud story for, for Cisco for security is the ability to see kind of and leverage intelligence, actionable um, insight across any one of those platforms, right? Normalize it, bring it in, show me the interaction, whether that customer is sitting on a Cisco network or this customer is sitting at the endpoint outside of a, of a web server on AWS. What can I see across that? What are my expectations of that interaction? Susie, we was on yesterday. She's the uh, champion of DevNet, this whole DevNet zone where we're located. A lot of energy, a lot of developers. Cisco has App Dynamics, which is, you know, brings that app perspective. As the network becomes programmable, mm -hmm. and you see the rise of Kubernetes, great indicator that you mentioned that earlier, how should customers think about programmability with the security paradigm that's put forth uh, from Cisco today? What's the, what's, what's the guiding principles? What are some of the strategies they should mm -hmm. take? What's your view on that? Intelligence and interoperability. So whether we're looking at like an ICE integration or encrypted threat analytics or any of the other services that Cisco puts together, bringing all that intelligence back in and putting it into usable fashion. Simplicity of integrating the products and suites, services. Yeah, uh, service providers you mentioned before, the, you know, they, they're used to programmability. What, what I've seen over the last few years is they're embracing the multi-cloud message before. Five years ago, it was, oh my God, that's the enemy. I need to fight against them. Now, they're direct connecting into a lot of these public clouds. Uh, they're figuring out what of their services they keep versus offering services right. to customer and pass right. them through. Um, and it seems like a great opportunity for you to help them expand, especially their security footprint across yeah, those environments. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, the ability for a customer to say, hey, what is my real value add in this versus the pipe and the mechanics from behind the scene? So for us, we focus on what we do really well. We allow our partners, look, if you're going to do remediation, 
If you're going to do deployments into the web front end or new applications, if you're going to look at portability across cube environments, whatever the, the cost benefit or ratio is, um, we, we let them focus on that and we take the back end processing, which is the back end processing of alerts, back end processing of what we call observations, simplicity of bringing on partners for MSPs and servicing them. Ron, I want to get your thoughts on a quote we heard uh, in theCUBE yesterday uh, from a practitioner. Um, talking about multi-cloud and cloud in general. As people move to SaaS models and cloud, they don't really own the equipment. The quote was, IT doesn't own the equipment but owns the outcome. So the, the operating model's changing a little bit. Okay, I buy that, makes sense to me. And the quote was, it moves from find and fix to get evidence and escalate. How to handle the data becomes the core issue. Security data is a super important part yes. of it. Can you comment on your reaction to that, uh, that, to that, that, quote? that quote, the positioning? Because certainly cloud is a you know, rent versus buy, and it's classic, you still got the on-premise. But security is dealing across a holistic environment where data and escalating, sharing data, big part of it. What's your thoughts on, on the role of how to handle the data? Yeah, I think, well if you look at security and look at SaaS, right? What is our role? Our role is to normalize that data and be responsive every time a change is made in a cloud platform. The other thing what's great about a SaaS service is upgrading, right? So upgrading is updates and everything else that comes at you from a security perspective, SaaS is best to handle that, right? Because we are looking at that, we're providing updates as well as changes to our platform almost daily. We publish that back to the customers. And us as a subscriber, you don't, you don't renew if you're not happy. So it continually puts us on the forefront of saying, look, we've got to innovate, we've got to be responsive to the customer, we've got to be able to address any other kind of, and it isn't always just malware or something that goes wrong. It could also be malfunction. It could also be a leftover assets that are sitting in AWS environment or Lambda functions that go awry. So we have multiple ways of providing you know, value to the customer on those infrastructures. A lot of moving parts. Dependencies could be, you could right. move availability zone, have some dependencies across the network. A lot of things at <laughs> play here. Right, and mm -hmm. what's really good about StealthWatch Cloud is from the back end of it, we're sitting out and addressing that. We're trying to put a human's a touch to what we would find in an alert and what would be important to a customer and how we drive that value. Yeah, so Ron, we know that security is always an ongoing journey, so that there, there's no end to where you need to go. You mentioned Lambda functions, serverless something that, 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 that your team's involved in, or are there are other areas that we should be looking for throughout 2019 uh, for some of the maturation? Uh, I think there is, but I, I don't, as far as the roadmap goes, there's always integration, like integration with Meraki, integration with other Cisco products. And the same thing goes with any other, I, I had just finished a meeting with Google about, you know, um, what other data elements can we get to enrich that security perspective from Google? That'll be the exact same thing with AWS functions. The team will look at all of those feeds, which ones are relative to things that we can provide from a security perspective, or generate value to the customer and integrate those first. This highlights the operating model for Cisco as a company. You mentioned Google, Amazon. There's a real integrations, real partnerships, deep, meaningful, technical yeah. relationships. Share some insight into how that, how's that's going. Well, <laughs> um, there's a lot. There's always a lot from each of those platforms. So you do have to kind of pick and choose as to what you're going to address. I'm sure all of us on the team that are in the forefront of selling are saying, what about this? What about that? Can we incorporate it? Um, <laughs> it's Work a, the it's backlog. A difficult. <laughs> but I would also say what's really big here in Europe is Azure. Um, is Azure, actually, yes. That's a real big, you know, potential customer base to address as well. We're talking to the data, uh, the DNA center platform guys, and they're like, the backlog's huge, and yeah, they're just like, oh, we're just going to work the backlog. Yeah. Like, to your point about SaaS, you knock these things down one at a time, you go get, just prioritize, do the classic product management. Well, Ron, thanks for coming on, I really appreciate you the bet. insight. Uh, final minute, just give a plug for what's going on at StealthWatch Cloud, what are some of the highlights, uh, what are some of the things you guys are promoting, what's the, what's the good news, share with us. I would say that probably the best, the best news is, you know, adding all the cloud platforms, being able to truly be a multi-cloud story, um, integration with other Cisco products that are coming in the forefront that we'll be announcing at other events. Um, throughout, I think, RSA, we've got some announcements coming out, so if you'll be there. Um, and then the part that we keep hitting home is meeting with the sales teams, starting the trial, and allowing us to kind of prove out the value of the prop product and service. Security portfolios expand, you get titration, SaaS coming around the corner, a lot of other interesting things happening in the Cisco world. Duo. A lot of great stuff. Hey, thanks for coming on. You bet. Uh, we're here inside the, the Cube in Barcelona, Spain for Cisco Live Europe. I'm John Horst Stay with us for more day three coverage after this short break. Mm -hmm.